हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द सेकंड लेक्चर ऑफ मेमोरियल ड्राफ्टिंग कोर्स इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल लर्न हाउ टू डीकोड मूड प्रॉब्लम दैट इज हाउ टू अंडरस्टैंड द मूड प्रपोजिशन एंड ट्रूली एब्जॉर्ब द फैक्ट्स ऑफ द केस नाउ लेट्स फर्स्ट अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इज मूड प्रॉब्लम मूड प्रॉब्लम इज ऑल्सो पॉपुलरली रेफर्ड एज मूड प्रपोजिशन और फैक्ट शीट mood problem is a set of hypothetical facts which is drafted in such a manner to strengthen the case on each sides no mood court case will be drafted to make one's party stronger than the other in mood court competition as participants are required to draft memorials on both sides and present cases on each sides according to pick of lots the case will be articulated with open ended legal issues for which various areas of law will be applicable mood court problem will be usually based on a case pending before any court of law or which is under debate by the parliament there are different kinds of mood court problems but broadly it can be divided into two first one constitutionality of an amendment or a bill second type cases on unclear areas of law if constitutionality of any recent amendment or proposed bill will be under scrutiny then the scope will be quite limited and it is the best choice for your first mood court competition we know that there will be two parties one will have to prove the constitutionality whereas the other will prove that the amendment or the bill is unconstitutional second type of mood problem will be in the form of a case which will be unraveling you to the vast areas of law especially the laws which are unclear on the subject matter well not to worry even beginners can take up this type of cases but with a little more effort and burning the night oil mood courts are meant to train you put you in the shoes of a lawyer hence when you are participating in a mood court competition think like a lawyer what would you do when one of its kind case comes before you when you are a lawyer yes first you will look for the laws on the subject matter to understand the concept better then you look for landmark cases or precedents right same you will do in mood court competition as well therefore while going through the fact sheet or the mood problem study it like a lawyer now that we know what is mood proposition let's learn how to understand one decoding a mood problem has five simple rktld steps they are read the problem know the terms timeline list of applicable laws discussion with the team now let's understand rktld steps one by one first step read the problem well we all know how to read right it's so obvious but i doubt that reading just not seeing the words mechanically by the eyes and muttering them out from your mouth reading should be associated with understanding reading a mood problem is not an easy job but it is my job to make it easier for you now for your practice we have shared a real mood code competition brochure in the group open it you'll see in midst of details of the competition and registration forms there lies two to three pages of mood code problem or the mood proposition now you have a task to do pause this lecture and go through the mood proposition once and then come back
to resume the lecture well now you might have read it once let's see did you understand the whole case which area of law it falls under can you explain the whole case in 5 to 10 sentences within 2 minutes okay okay i know it all seems highly impossible on the one go that is the reason why participation in the moot court is not an easy job the participants have to read the case at least 15 times or until they can explain the whole case in 5 to 10 sentences that too within 2 minutes now don't keep a count on every read and stop at 15 reading should not be mechanical read to understand each and every word now to understand and to get hold of the case faster focus on the following five points name of the court name of the parties procedural history findings of the lower court list of applicable laws while reading the case several times whenever you come across these five points underline it and read them again and again unless you have absorbed these facts as if you have a photographic memory now let's move on to the second step know the terms as and when you read the moot problem you will come across some new terms some may be legal terms while others might be straight out of mr shashi tharoor's dictionary well legal terms such as writ bail bill amendment liability etc will be easy to spot and with a little bit digging into the dictionary you'll easily understand them now you should know that google meaning may not be admissible or may not be accepted by the judges in a moot court competition or even in the real court we being lawyers or law students should only rely on the information provided in authoritative sources only for meaning of the terms we can refer any prescribed publishers law dictionaries such as the most famous black's law dictionary or the reliable website that is merriam webster another benefit of learning legal meaning from these sources is that in these platforms you will find illustrations or explanation on the topic with the case laws yes you will be one step ahead on your research when you have referred these sources as your legal dictionary instead of a normal dictionary and yes don't forget to note all these findings in a place so that you can access them whenever necessary it often happens that during the moot court competitions argument round judges will stop you when you're arguing and ask you to explain the legal meaning of some terms now in that time your brain may glow go blank so you don't want that to happen so if you have the list of legal terms meanings with you then you can easily refer that and with confidence you can answer the judges as i said it is also important to state from where you have learned that definition so if if you have referred it from the authoritative sources it will be better than just stating some normal meaning out of google or normal dictionary there is a lot of difference when you have uh, the meanings from a statute or the meanings from some legal dictionary or the meaning from a layman's point of view 
only two types of meanings will be admissible in the court that is either from a legal dictionary or from statute some statutes define the legal, legal meaning of the terms how it should be interpreted there will be uh, interpretation clause usually it will be under section 2 or 3 sometimes so it will be the interpretation clause which explains the legal meaning which has to be interpreted while dealing with the particular act so whenever you are dealing with a certain act for example if you are uh, dealing with evidence act then you have to refer section 3 which is the interpretation clause there and they have even uh, explained you the meaning of court fact evidence etc so when the judges are asking you the meaning of that term while you are dealing with the particular act you have to refer the act first you have to refer the meaning which is given in the particular act if certain terms are not mentioned in that in that act then you can refer the legal dictionary next step is timeline all moot problems have series of events and a bunch of characters involved make a flow chart to help you understand the relationship between each parties and make a list of events in chronological order they may give the events in in a backdated uh, manner or sometimes they will even uh, jumble the events so that you get confused so it is very important that you refer the dates of the events and write down again and arrange the events in a chronological order and yes you have to focus especially on the procedural history of the case usually moot provides cases with history as in the case that might be an appeal or even second appeal sometimes so it is very important to understand what happened in the lower court and what was the judgment given by the lower court's judge and most importantly you have to focus that what was the reason the judge gave when giving that order now this reason given by the judge will help you make your case how let me explain you have to go through the uh, moot proposition which we have shared in that find out what is the judgment given by the lower court and while giving that judgment the judge had stated some reasons now in your arguments or while drafting your memorial you have to make your arguments in such a manner which should be mentioning those reasons on the one side you have to say that those reasons are correct and this appeal should be dismissed and it is not maintainable and uh, as it is already stated in the lower court that uh, for so and so reasons it is proper but on the other side you have to prove that those reasons are not correct and you have some legal contentions which will prove that the case have to be uh, judged in another way but you can't just stay, say that in the arguments but you have to follow your arguments with some precedents or some laws that will be explained while uh, dealing with the drafting section uh, now just remember that you have to focus on the concept that where they have uh, mentioned the reason for the lower court's judgment it is a hint which you have to add those things in your argument sometimes even uh, we have to make an issue out of those terms as well so that's the tip so you have to go through that paragraph and tell me personally in the uh, whatsapp chat that what you have understood from that paragraph and how can you use it in your argument 
and specially mentioned me that uh, what are the reasons which the lower court has stated and how will you interpret it and how can you make it as an issue or how can you argue that on each sides it's okay if you can't answer all these questions but try to at least find out what is the reason okay now let's move on to next slide next step is to make a list of applicable laws this is a very easy step in moot problems they will mention few provisions or sometimes even some areas of law for which your uh, moot court case belongs you have to underline it as in when you are uh, coming across those terms or the provisions and when the list is getting bigger when you find that some different areas of law have been mentioned or some of the provisions of uh, some act and some of the provisions of some other treaties or conventions have been mentioned then you have to make a separate list and while doing your research you have to come back to this list and research one by one now in broad sense any case can be easily related to the constitutional law human rights and international conventions and treaties take for example your case is related to contract law or it is related to industrial disputes act or even some workman issue but it can be related to constitution and even human rights as well so it does not matter that if the moot proposition doesn't state constitutional law explicitly but you know that our fundamental rights have been mentioned in under constitutional law and even human rights um, are there and uh, some international conventions and treaties are there for which india is a signatory and those have to be followed by the state so you can invoke all of them as well it it does not require that uh, the moot proposition should mention the laws you have to be creative in linking the laws in finding out that which laws will be applicable to your case and of course for your benefit so it, it may differ that on the one side you may say that the particular law for example a applies on the other side of your memorial you can mention that a certain law b applies so i think uh, it's clear that you have to be a little creative and innovative while dealing with this step therefore note down the words like liability right violation it is most probable that in those sentences where they have mentioned these terms or in those paragraph they have mentioned some clue on which your area of law will be belonging and that points out to you that where to look for the laws so if they are mentioning some fundamental rights have been violated then straight forward it is pointing out that it is a constitutional law case so directly you can apply constitutional law you have to research on constitutional law and you have to see what articles are um, have been violated and you have to deeply research on it sometimes they may uh, say that so and so article of some convention have been violated and that is in issue here so you you have to find out about that convention or that international treaty as well let's deal with that in the in detail in the research section now moving on to the next step next step is to discuss with your team now this is the most important step of all 
uh, as we know that moot court competition consists of um, two mooters and one researcher in a team and sometimes uh, only two mooters will be there one of them will be acting as a researcher but nonetheless it is very important to do the preparations together whether it's two people or three people doesn't matter you have to do the preparations together when you read the case several times you will get an idea about what the case is but everyone has their own perspectives of understanding so you have to share your thoughts share your inputs on the case after all it is all a game of per- perspective therefore sharing your views with the team members is highly recommended while studying the moot proposition you should only interpret and not assume it's a most important point so remember that you should only interpret not assume moot problems will have unclear facts well it is supposed to be like that but it is your job to interpret them within the context of the whole case but never assume any fact which is not mentioned in the fact sheet and while interpreting the facts you should stay away from personal bias it may be your religious views or your personal opinions about a concept but never try to interpret with the mask of personal bias and it is very important to stick to the strict facts mentioned in the fact sheet if you are assuming any fact and while arguing uh, in the court also you you will go on assuming that and you will throw your contentions on the assumptions then the judge will not hesitate it is their job to stop you right there and ask you how did you get to that point and in that time you should be able to explain that with reasonable arguments so you cannot uh say something that uh, you assume that might have happened no that may not be the case so whatever is written in the fact sheet stick to that don't assume anything just interpret it nowadays even uh, the organizers are uh, giving you an opportunity to clarify the facts so use that tool before the clarification date send out all the questions and clarifications you need to be answered so get done with that so that no assumptions uh, will be made by you which will of course hit you harder while making your arguments in the court and don't forget to ask this question with your teammate that why do you think so when he or she tries to interpret or explain a fact you have to ask that why do you think so so that is the same question which the judge will be asking you while you are arguing why do you think so and you should be able to answer it with reasonable explanation so if your teammate is answering with reasonable explanation take that interpretation otherwise leave it right there if an explanation is uh if you think that some explanation that is given by your teammate or even by you that may be accepted by the judge then write it down in the same manner whenever you are uh, going through the moot problem you may get some questions same questions might be even asked by the judges or sometimes even in the rebuttal you may have to exploit those points when your uh, um, opponent might have explained it with their own assumptions but you can rebut it so it is very important to presume uh, that whatever what questions might have been asked if you were arguing the same point before the court so note it down at one place so that when the judge will ask you those questions you don't have to wait for the researcher to write it down on the chit and pass it on you can with confidence you can answer all those questions by yourself last but not the least 
रिपीट एज वी ऑल नो प्रैक्टिसिंग अगेन एंड अगेन मेक्स यू वन स्टेप क्लोजर टू द परफेक्शन दे फोर रिपीट दीज फाइव स्टेप्स अगेन एंड अगेन अंटिल द डेट ऑफ योर कॉम्पिटिशन देर विल बी अ लास्ट मिनिट लर्निंग और लास्ट मिनिट एनलाइटनमेंट विच विल हेल्प यू इन द कॉम्पिटिशन लर्निंग इज इंडीड अ नेवर एंडिंग प्रोसेस होप यू हैव अंडरस्टूड द कॉन्सेप्ट नाउ आई वॉन्ट यू टू स्टडी द मूड प्रपोजिशन शेयर विद यू इन दिस व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप इफ यू गेट एनी डाउट इन इंटरप्रिटिंग और फॉलोइंग एनी ऑफ दीज स्टेप्स विद दैट मूड प्रपोजिशन you can post your query in the group that's all about uh, how to decode the mood proposition thank you and all the best